In my most recent video, I talked about how a woman in Talihina encountered a seven foot tall coyote walking on two legs. It's interesting that Talihina is also where another hairy, upright walking creature, nicknamed by the locals the Green Hill Monster, has been sighted. In 1970, while hunting in the woods around Talihina, a man named Dusty Rhodes was startled by what he described as a hairy, upright walking creature. Soon afterwards, several head of cattle were found mutilated mysteriously on a Talihina area ranch. Within a mile of the mutilation site, in October 1971, the most famous sighting of the Green Hill Monster would occur. This case can be found on numerous Bigfoot databases, some of which incorrectly list the date of the sighting as 1970. Most likely they have confused the date with the road sighting. One of the people who was there on the night of the encounter wrote to the BFRO about the incident, which received a follow-up investigation. The encounter took place about 300 yards from the east end of the Green Hill Road, five miles southeast of Tallahina. Following an evening pep rally, several members of the Tallahina High School football team decided to cruise the foggy back roads looking for a place to party. After finding a spot in the woods just off Green Hill Road, the boys exited the vehicle and lit a fire. One of the kids, a boy named E.S., the witness only used initials, wandered away from the fire to take a leak. He was doing his business when he noticed something come up from behind and grab him. E.S. was horrified. He turned and ran back to the clearing, passing the boys sitting around the fire, and locked himself inside the vehicle. The other players had no idea what was going on. Another boy, named E.N., assumed it was some kind of animal, and for a laugh, grabbed a spotlight out of his truck and shined it in the direction where E.S. had come from. While moving the light around the woods, E.N. also decided to relieve himself. Passing the light around the forest, he spotted something standing only 20 feet away from him, a large, hairy animal standing on two legs. The sight of this thing terrified him, and he immediately turned and ran for the vehicle. Assuming something was wrong, the other boys also got inside their vehicles and headed back to Talihina. The witness remembered that he and some other students, along with a teacher, were at the dresser's ranch barn preparing a homecoming float when several members of the football team drove up to the barn yelling and screaming that they had seen something in the woods on Green Hill Road. Apparently they had elected to stop at the barn first, knowing that a teacher was there. The witness recalled that E.S. was white as a sheet and seemed to be in a state of shock. He would not even exit the vehicle. The other player, E.N., was shaking so bad that he would not even zip up his pants. At first the students assumed the players were pulling a prank, although once they observed how disturbed E.S. and E.N. were, they began to think otherwise. So all of us jumped into our cars and trucks and headed out to Green Hill Road to see if we could see anything. Since there was a whole line of cars and trucks going out of town at the same time, the local police seen us and called the highway patrol and county deputy. They thought we were up to no good. Upon arriving at Green Hill Road, some of the students began shining spotlights into the area where E.S. and E.N. had encountered the creature. They didn't see anything out of the ordinary. At that point, a highway patrol officer identified as A.T. and the county deputy identified as H.B. arrived on the scene. They asked the students what was going on. E.S. and E.N., who were present in the vehicles, proceeded to tell the officers of what they saw in the woods earlier in the evening. With that, the two officers went into the forest to look around. Within a few minutes, the two officers returned to the students waiting on the road with the message that they should leave. If we knew what was good for us, we would get out of there, the witness recalled the officers saying. They neither confirmed or denied seeing anything, but in his report, the witness noted that the officers seemed to be acting strange. After that, the students got back in their cars and headed back to town. At school the next day, the students couldn't stop talking about the creature that they nicknamed the Green Hill Monster. They were so worked up after school, a group of students, identified by the witness as CB, BT, FM, JN, JC, FW, AW, OC, RT, MT, EN, and BL, drove out to the Green Hill Road to have a look during daylight hours. On the south side of Green Hill Road was a cattle pasture and a barbed wire fence. On the north side of the road, where the incident happened, it was just woods with a dead-end turnoff, the spot where the kids liked to go and party. While they didn't find the creature during their daytime search, what they did find was quite disturbing. There was three deer, necks broken and guts ripped out. None of the deer had any bullet holes, 
and were intact except for the guts being ripped out. The witness first thought that poachers were to blame for the deer kills. The animals were found near the sighting location. However, upon examination, the witness, a hunter himself, determined that the deer had not been shot. He moved the deer to check for bullet holes and, in doing so, discovered that the necks had been broken. He and the others looked for tracks but found none in the surrounding grassy area. The BFRO representative who investigated the case believed the witness to be highly credible. He wrote, The witness is a Vietnam veteran and a state employee. He did not wish for additional information to be shown because he is widely known in the region. In fact, it turned out that we have several acquaintances in common. I am convinced that this is a highly credible person and believe it likely that the deer kill stash was connected to the Sasquatch seen the previous evening.